NBA draft 24 hours away. NBA free agency 72 hours away. The mayhem is right now. Milwaukee's moves for Operation Don't Let Go, the entrance to Compo, and Harden refusing 50 million a year and posting bottle caps? That panel makes sense of it all. <laughs> 50 million. Got the Greek name right. Much when you think about it. Spiro Didas. Keep talking. The two questions after Milwaukee's busy night last night. How much better are the Bucks? And how does this satisfy Giannis? Drew Holiday and Bogdan Bogdanovich. Some really strong advanced stats between the two. One all-star appearance between the two. The deal for Holiday, a similar package to what the Lakers gave up for Anthony Davis last year. Ramona Shelford around the horn to you. What do these moves do for Milwaukee? Well, look, I think Milwaukee basically said to Giannis, we're going to get you help. Remember, he met with them after the season. Right. He met with the ownership. And they had a conversation about what they needed to do to improve the team. They don't make these trades without consulting Giannis, okay? And so if he's on board with these trades, then he would be, it would be a hell of a move for him now to not go and re-sign with them, to not go and extend his contract. If he says, yeah, okay, these are good trades, I like it, but then he's like, eh, I'm still not feeling the Supermax, I, I think that's tough because they just gave up so much and mortgaged their future to get Drew Holiday, to, to, to get Bogdanovich there, and, and this is the team that they're moving forward with. I think you should look for this core to be the Bucks team going forward for a long time, um, simply based on how much everybody gave up here. Frank Isola? Everything they do is about Giannis and Tedekumpo. They needed to get better. Eric Bledsoe is a very good regular season player. He just does not cut it in the playoffs. Drew Holiday plays both ends of the court. He can shoot the ball. He's a leader. He's mature. He's an adult. Bogdanovich is about eight of them in the league. They all can shoot. They got one that could certainly shoot. But also remember this, too, about Giannis. They needed to get better. They are 5-9 and nine in their last 14 playoff games. A lot of that falls on the Greek freak. We all love him. But he's got, that record is on his resume. Two Bogdanoviches in the league, so we'll get you for that. And also, you called Drew Holiday an adult? Uh, uh, what were we looking at with the Bucks last year, Frank? I, I just think he's the kind of guy that's a leader. He's been through a lot of stuff in his life. He's going to come there knowing what he needs to do. He'll be great for that team, great for Giannis and Tedekupo. Okay. Don't ever rule out having mature guys on your team. It's so you think they got a lot better, it sounds like. Sarah Spain, are you with Frank there? Well, the holiday thing's interesting. He's obviously a great addition, but it's kind of like when you overpay yep. for a stadium Coke because you want the souvenir glass. I mean, Giannis is the souvenir <laughs> glass that you're getting and hoping <laughs> to hang on to, and you're willing to overpay for that Coke a little bit. It's good shooting. The defensive team in the Bucks gets even better defensively. To Ramona's point, I think he's in on these deals, and I think, of course, they're looking at Giannis to make sure he wants this. I just don't know if this is enough for him to say, I'm willing to commit when I haven't yet seen what the Nets are going to look like, when I haven't yet seen long-term if the Lakers are going to keep rolling through the West. There's too much else that could go on for him to commit to a small market team in Milwaukee with these additions, not knowing whether they are going to be willing to, down the line, add an even bigger piece. I don't know if this is enough to put them over the top, and that's a big move for him to make without knowing that. Again, though, he'd then have to go through the next year of asking a answering a question every single day about whether he's going to re-sign if he doesn't sign that option before. So December. you're not sure this is enough? Now I go to Israel Gutierrez on the Bucks moves. Look, I always lose the souvenir cup, and I regret the purchase, and I think the Milwaukee Bucks will <laughs> lose their souvenir cup if this is the move that they're making. Because like Ramona said, yes, I do have a hard time believing they did not go to Giannis and say, hey, what do you think about these trades? I have a harder time believing that Giannis said to them, that's what I want for the next five years here. A 30-year-old Drew Holiday, a 28-year-old Bogdan Bog uh, Bogdanovich. By the way, uh, Giannis is 25. And so those aren't the types of players you want to get. This a little reeks not quite as bad as LeBron's Cleveland Cavaliers, the first iteration of them where, you know, you got the Shaq and you got an Antoine Jameson here and a random player here and said, hey, go win a championship. This, this reminds me something like that. When you think about the caliber of player he is, he's up there with Kawhi Leonard. Who got Paul George to go with him to L.A.? He's up there with LeBron James. Who, you know, played with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love, and then got Anthony Davis in L.A. That's the caliber of player you need to play next to you to have a franchise to have a dynasty type of a franchise and this is not to it. put more not of a statistical point on it holiday's 
per, his PER last year, was 92nd in the league. Bogdanovich was 141st, Frank. When we're talking about players who may be available this offseason, why not James Harden if you're Milwaukee uh, instead of these moves? Well, it's, first of all, it's, it's way too much money. That's not going to happen. Houston isn't going to trade Harden for those kind of players. You know, the one thing about what Izzy's talking about, see, Izzy is sharp. He's good looking. He's got the whole thing working. But he is cutthroat. He knows that the Miami Heat are sitting there waiting in Miami, just like Masai Ujiri up in Toronto. Those are the two th teams that believe they can get Giannis. But to Ramona's point, like, would he have to sign a five-year deal? Could he sign maybe a two- or a three-year deal and kind of see exactly. down the road where things are going with the Milwaukee? See, that's always a possibility. But this is a one-year audition, maybe, for, for Giannis. And the moves you make are for Drew Holiday, who made one all-star appearance, and Bogdanovich, who's a very reliable well, Tony, rotational player. Tony, he's got to play better. He didn't, he didn't play well in the last four games against Toronto. He got hurt and didn't play well against Miami. So come on but now. how many Somebody other teams are throwing well. out one guy Again, I mean, the Lakers, of course, have Davis. Davis, the package for Davis is what the Bucks just spent on Drew Holiday, Sarah Spain? Yeah, and one thing I'll say to, to the point, Giannis seems very loyal, but in the NBA, what we've seen is you could sign a long-term deal for all that money, and then you could force your way out. So he might still decide, I'm going to do this. I'm going to answer all the questions people ask me, and I'm going to get through this. And then in a couple of years, if they don't do what I want, I'm going to pull a D Davis or a Harden or Bucks any number of other that. players. Right. Forget All-Stars. Go back at all the previous NBA champions of the last 25 years. Multiple Hall of Famers. There's an outlier with the Detroit Pistons. And maybe the Dallas Mavericks sort of the year. But, but that was Jason Kidd who was with Dirk Nowitzki. And this Giannis is adding Drew Holiday and Bogdanovich. Great rotational players. But if James Harden's available, Not let's enough. talk about James Harden for a second. The empty twirling bottle cap, all right? Bottle cap, <laughs> cap, capital, Washington, D.C. He's going to the Wizards, people. That was easy. I don't know. Everybody has such a trouble with this. Refusing the league's first $50 million a year contract. It's a pretty good sign you're leaving. Uh, so what does it mean, Frank? Harden's really putting himself out there, and all smoke is... To Brooklyn, and I bring you in now because you are uh, only on yes here for the pre and post game for the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, <laughs> w w connect the dots for me. God bless James Harden that he could turn down a $100 million contract over two years. That's incredible. But if I'm the Houston Rockets yeah, and Karis LeVert, Spencer Dinwiddie, Jared Allen are terrific role players. In fact, Karis LeVert maybe one day could be an all-star. But if you're the Rockets without any first-round picks because you traded them to Oklahoma City in the Chris Paul deal, you can't make that deal. How are you going to sell that to your fans? It's one thing to trade him for Ben Simmons, who's seven years younger, has been an all-star, six foot ten, can handle the ball. I understand why the Nets want to do it. I don't know how Houston makes that move. Is Ruka Tiers? Well, I look at that video and I see him focusing on the cap as he takes it off, which to me is slang for lie. But <laughs> what is he saying is a lie? Is it a lie that he turned down 50 million? Right. Is it a lie that he wants to be traded to the Brooklyn Nets? Nobody knows. Look, I don't think that that Brooklyn Nets trade will happen. I don't think it can happen. I look at this, I'm kind of disappointed in James Harden as a whole, who's been catered to as a superstar, who's got three different superstars to play beside and hasn't really hasn't even gotten to the finals yet. And I also think Houston as a city, man. After watching DeAndre Hopkins catch that Hail Mary, they might want to line up outside Toyota Center and oh. say, please don't let James Harden go. Please. We've already suffered enough. Well, maybe the lie is also that this team is committed to building a, a contender the way that they are right now, Good spending day. money. Uh, Sarah Spain, I'll bring you in here. You can go after the, that cap, that spinning cap, or all the smoke around Harden to Brooklyn. Yeah, I see the opposite of Izzy because the saying is no cap. So he was showing that the bottle has no cap, which means it's true. I did turn down 50 million. And also there's no cap on what I will ask the Rockets to do in order to make me feel like I'm getting everything I want and then leave as soon as it's not the optimal situation for me. They've done everything he's asked. They've brought in every player that he wanted. And this is part of the issue with I love player empowerment, but how much does it mess over a team when you sign a guy for this many years and then he wants out in the midst of you trying to build based on that timeline? I also think the net situation would be a hilarious mess. It could be great. 
The content will yeah. be great, even if it's terrible. But just no defense. All guys who want the ball. I'm just picturing Kevin Durant watching. Her, well, let's know, let's go deeper on that. And then Kyrie trying to get the last shot. We're just talking about Milwaukee. It was my own personal opinion. That's one star and a, and a lot of other good rotational guys. Well, then Brooklyn theoretically would be going for the exact opposite of that, Ramona. Yeah. How would that work with Harden, with Irving, and with Durant? I have no idea. You know. I mean, I got to be honest, when I first heard about this. <laughs> Most honest like, answer in the show. <laughs> I mean, like, I heard about it, and I, it was it was essentially Kevin Durant and James Harden were, were working out in L.A. I heard about it from a player that one of them told, et cetera. You know, it kind of got around, and I was like, wait, I'm sorry. T walk me through this. James Harden plays point guard. Kyrie Irving plays point guard. Kevin Durant plays, like, with the ball in his hand. Who? Who is playing what position? Like, well, how does that work? Like, in the fourth quarter, which one of them is taking the last shot? I get that, I but it's, could you also be so far outside the box that there is no box? So far outside yeah, the bottle then, that there is no cap, and, and you can... Yeah. Who needs positions in oh. basketball anymore? Right, Israel Gutierrez? I mean, if Steve Nash you get is your points coach, for that, I definitely no think they can figure something out, right? They've got Kevin Durant, who just came off of a move where he went from the main guy to, you know, one of the guys in Golden State. And uh, I think the most difficult guy would be to convince that of would be Kyrie Irving. But even he played next to LeBron James for Bingo. a championship and wasn't the number one guy. So I think they can figure Frank something Isola. out together. Yeah, and that's the thing. You have three of the top five ISO players in the league. I'm not so sure it could work. One thing would be if you traded Kyrie to Houston and then you kept those uh -huh. goal players, I think that could work. <laughs> but I'm not so sure about this other one. That is a fire take for my Sola at the horn. Um, let me think this out again, right? So, bottle, cap, Captain America, <laughs> Avengers, Thanos, <laughs> Thanasis, Harden wants to team up with Giannis' brother. Did I do it? That yes. Is. What did it cost? No, you missed it. Every there was a, there was product placement in that cap. It yes. was drink at Body Armor. Oh, okay. Legs, he's yeah. just selling a drink. He's just he's micro poly. Just a... What a week in baseball front office news. Kim Ang to Miami, and news of the day from Chicago. Theo Epstein stepping down from the Cubs. The man who brought the first title to the Cubs in 108 years after bringing the first title to Boston in 86 years, says he'll take the year off. Sarah Spain, how does this news land in Chicago, and what position does it leave the Cubs? Well, it's pretty clear that Theo wasn't going to sign a new deal after this one, so to leave a year early is the surprise, but a peaceful transition to Jed Hoyer, who he's worked with for 17 years, knowing the big decisions being made about the biggest names on that team will be made by Jed and then owned for the next couple years, makes a lot more sense than not welcoming in the next person to take over power and making sure it's easier when they take over. And Theo Epstein, as a person, and as Chicago, we'll look at him forever. That's a pretty that's a pretty great Mount Rushmore yeah. for him, right? Uh, to have very, very hard, very hard to say goodbye to someone that you trust, you respect, you know is good at his job and is super, super fun as well. So he will be missed. Israel Gutierrez? See what you did there, Sarah, with that transition of power. Um, look, I don't think this is a big surprise to the organization. His contract was going to be up at the after next year. Probably was going to leave after that, so he makes it easier on both the Cubs and himself. It seems like they're headed toward a rebuild with a lot of players uh, heading toward free agency, but the good thing for Epstein is he's still only 19 years old, has a bright future ahead of him. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Isola. Well, Tony, you mentioned it. It's about 194 years of playoff drought if you combine the Cubs with the Red Sox. That's why the only job for Theo Epstein is the New York Mets, 1986. Let's see him <laughs> win with that team. New owner makes a lot of sense. Have, Get him the in The Mets? How, how about the Knicks, Frank Isola? I think the Knicks might be the job for him. <laughs> oh, there you, know you go. You're right. Uh, you're right. Momo, how about Jets. you? <laughs> Some things are actually not savable. Um, you know, I, I, think, I think with uh, I think with Theo, you really you have to look more at the bigger questions of why he's leaving in the first yeah. place. Is it because he's burnt out, or is it because the Cubs organization is not is not really willing to keep this core together? Is not willing to operate at the level that he wants to to keep the, those great young players. Um, you know, it's been reported that he's he's not taking his $10 million salary, which would, could go back to uh, the, some of the front office people and some of the people in the organization who could lose their jobs. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a great move right there. But, you know, why does it have to be that way? They won a World Series. They're doing great. I, well, let know, me I, ask you this then, Sarah Spain. It's Ramona's question. Does this mean a rebuild is happening, that they're going to break down this team completely? 
No, I don't think this tells us that. Theo's been pretty clear throughout his career that he does things in chunks, he accomplishes something, and he wants a new challenge. I heard years ago that he was not going to add on to this deal, and that was when they were still contending, and it was right after they'd won. So to me, I don't think this tells you for sure what their plan is with this core. That World Series was four years ago. Feels a little bit longer than that now. And that was, again, Sarah, I don't want to put it on you, a roster with a 24-year-old MVP at the time, a 23-year-old you know, stud coming up in the middle of the infield, and, and they got that one that you waited so long for. You almost thought there could have been more. We'll move on. Vikings you can't bring me 19. Down. You can't bring me down. Don't try. I'm going to bring you down right now. The Bears in. game oh, last shoot. night. There you go. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it's, it seems like their <laughs> offense is operating suboptimally. And this is the first week offensive coordinator um, Bill Lazor took over play calling duties from Matt Nagy's offense. So the chair wants to give gives away to the honorable delegate from Chicago. What would you see from the Bears last night? <laughs> Uh, exactly what you expected. Their top running back is out. When Nick Foles had success in Philadelphia, they had the third best running game in the league. The Bears are dead last. They've got no offensive line. He can't run RPOs. He's a statue back there, and this great defense is being wasted. Anything else? Tell us how you really <laughs> feel. Uh-huh. Israel, how about you? I don't think it was the play caller that was the problem. It was the plays, and it was that offensive line. I mean, it's, it seems like they were surprised on third and long that they were getting pressure uh, on this team. It just seems like it's not working. It's no match for that defense. And, frankly, any team that can end that streak of Kirk Cousins not winning on Monday Night Football, that is quite the accomplishment <laughs> from the Bears. Right, guys, Sola? I'd be ashamed. They replaced their starting quarterback when he had a winning record. I just would have left Nick Foles as the reliever, the expert reliever like the Mariana Rivera of football. Have him come in. They should have stayed with Trubisky. That was a mistake. Ramona Shelburne. Well, look, when they started off there, you know, they got off to a hot start. We all wondered if they were for real or if there was some, not, not much behind it. There's not much behind it. Like, there's no offense there. Their longest run in the last two games was 11 yards by Barcavius Mingo on a fake punt. Longest run in two games. <laughs> Good, thank you. Good piece of information, Momo. We'll move on. The Saints are the two seed in the NFC right now, but enter potentially multiple weeks without Drew Brees as he heals five fractured ribs and a collapsed lung. He's seeking Oof. a second opinion. Oof. This is what the Saints prepare for, though, when they sign Jameis Winston to that $1 million deal to back up. And when they signed Taysom Hill to that $21 million deal to back up the backup, I'm not sure if it's been clear to you, Israel, but it appears Sean Payton <laughs> is infatuated with Taysom Hill to some degree. How do you see this playing out? So infatuated that he wants to keep their relationship private. He doesn't want to share Taysom with anybody else, <laughs> and so he's keeping him on the bench. And yes, I think Jameis Winston is the obvious way to go here okay. because he's the guy who has thrown the ball more than 18 times, I believe, in the last year plus. So I'm not really sure what the conversation is here. What I'm confused by is Sean Payton's uh, love for Taysom Hill and refusing right, him to put him out there. A lot of people who appear on this show have been kicking dirt on Drew Brees' quarterback grade for a long time. He has had a very solid year but guess what Taysom Hill is a gimmick player that no knock against him he's terrific Jameis Winston is your quarterback right now Shelburne well look if you go to Taysom you have to change your offense as Frank said he's kind of a gimmick player you have to make that offense fundamentally change and they signed Jameis because if Drew Brees went out he could run the offense the way Drew ran there's Spain. Yeah, if you start Jameis, Taysom can still do what he does that doesn't work in the reverse. And as Pablo Torre said, Jameis always seems like he has himself and the opposing defense in fantasy. So it'll be an experiment, <laughs> but it'll be more explosive. Than I wouldn't put it past Sean Payton, though, to say I'm starting Taysom Hill this week just to freak out the opposing team. Keep him in for one play and then bring Jameis Winston. <laughs> in the next four games, I don't think they play a team with more than three wins. Frank Isola hasn't won in two months. I think you need to bring in Theo Epstein to break that curse. <laughs> Shelver Gutierrez, showdown in two minutes. Yes. Irks coaches in showdown. Here's Doug Peterson. Oh, I kind of <laughs> felt you probably wouldn't be in a good mood. You Can did... I hang up now? No, no, please don't, Doug. I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling my obligation right now. If I, I hang up, I'm feeling my obligation. Doug, I fully understand. I'm, I'm pissed off, Angelo. All right, what about Doug? <laughs> I'm pissed off. That I'm sounds like Sunday myself. dinner at I'm my house. Off at the way we played. Yeah. Angelo Cataldi there, WIP. There, there was a poll. Fans said uh, it was the coach's fault, Ramona. How, how should Peterson feel about that whole thing? 
Look, that's that's fine. He's fine to be mad about that. That was like basically the coach's equivalent of Marshawn Lynch. Like, I'm just here so I don't get fined. I mean, that, 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 that no, was great. No, he it's can't get you. mad at a poll that said the coach was the reason you lost when he followed that up with, I'm mad at myself. He's agreeing with them. He should applaud the fans for calling him out. That's not going to happen, Israel. Wow. Boy, Ramona. <laughs> we'll move on. Showdown two, irked coach number two, Andy Reid. When the Raiders beat Kansas City in week five, the Raiders bus victory lapped Arrowhead Stadium. Andy Reid and John Green are talking about it this week in the up to their game. Reid said he hasn't forgotten that. On the list of perceived slights, where is your opponent's team bus circumnavigating your stadium after beating you, Israel? It's pretty low because it would have to be a perceived slight. It's possible they just couldn't find their way out of that thing. Were they like blaring music to the speakers? I, mean, I don't think well, so. Yeah. I don't even know why he's mad. Doesn't he just look down at his Super Bowl championship ring and forget all about it? Yeah, he should. <laughs> he he kind of threw the bus driver under the bus for, for this happening. Uh, Ramona, take oh, the FaceTime. 30 stuff. seconds. All right, I want to give a shout out to the New Orleans Pelicans who elevated Teresa Weatherspoon to the to their front of their bench. Stan Van Gundy's staff now includes Teresa Weatherspoon. She's the eighth female full-time assistant in the NBA. I, what a franchise to work for. Swing cash in the front office. Teresa Weatherspoon on the bench. Way to go, Spoon. Love it. Mona Shelburne, thanks for that, Momo. We're on a 23 and a half hour break. See you tomorrow. Frank, I said it was two months since your last win. Sorry, it's three. <laughs>